Hello and welcome everybody, this is Joy Division with another game of Online Scythe. In this game I get to be Saxony in Innovative, which is a very aggressive, very fast combination and one of my personal favorites. Saxony has the ability Dominate, which lets you complete up to two stars in objectives and gives you no cap on combat stars. So when you're thinking about your game plan as Saxony, you have to have some targets, some early game c targets, and a rough plan for six stars, as you'll be improvising quite a bit based on what your opponents do, where they position themselves, and what sort of encounters you get early in the game. For early game targets, we want to see Crimea and Albion. You pick those two because they have zero combats at the start of the game. Zero combat cards, that is. And if they stay at zero for long enough, that's an easy win if we're able to start a fight. If Nordic was in this game, they'd also be a potential target because they only have a single card. Chances are it's a two or a three. We see Crimea getting some food, so we know they'll probably get combat cards very soon. They also haven't moved their main character, so unless something crazy happens, we probably won't be fighting them very early. This first encounter you see is very good for me. I get to pick two resources and an upgrade. So I'm going to choose to go with more metal, and I'm also going to decrease the cost of deploying a mech. That way, I don't have to spend turns trading, and that's going to speed up my game significantly. So I'm going to unlock that triple move, and reduce the cost of a mech, though I was thinking strongly about getting an enlist because I know that Crimea will be enlisting quite a bit and I could really use the extra cards. So looking at where I am, I have a speed mech and I'm set up to produce again to build underpass. Once you have underpass as Saxony, the board really opens up for you. You get access to any tunnel from an iron space and you can also access other iron spaces that you control, which include lots of important encounter spots as well as tiles inside of other players home bases so here is my second mech and it is round four that means on round five I'll be able to move out to the middle of the board Polania hasn't moved yet so maybe we'll be looking to get into their base later with Riverwalk in case they're in a bad position Albion just made a pretty big mistake here he left two oil on his worker that's near a tunnel. I can actually hit that and take his oil away. I can also try to tempt him into fighting me by doing so. I think what I'm gonna do here is secure this encounter with two of my moves. So I gotta hold the iron tile with a mech and then I'll be able to underpass to it with my main character. And now I'm gonna try and see if I can get Albion to fight me. I'm going to do this by standing on his oil. Um, I'm also thinking about bringing my worker with me and dropping it on the tunnel. Nobody has the ability to get out of their base yet, so I'm not worried about getting bumped. And if I can deploy mechs right on top of the tunnel, I'll have even quicker access to my opponents. Okay, you want to go hard to Saxony, so it's going to be two for four here. No real need for popularity this game. I want this game to be over as fast as possible. I'd like it to last anywhere from 10, if I get extremely lucky, to 14 rounds. Anything above that, and I'll probably be looking at second place or lower. Saxony is not, at least the way I'm playing this board, it's not going to be an economy of any sort. So the coins I have now are likely the coins I'll have the entire game, which is pretty low. Um, but the advantage is you can stop people from doing what they want to do. and if you do that well enough, the scores might be low, but you'll get that victory in a very short amount of time. Albion moves away from me. Okay, this is not good. I was hoping they would attack and try to get their oil back, but now they're gonna turtle up, get some cards, get some power probably. It might be tough for me to fight them. Crimea also moves out. This is, oh gosh, that encounter is not what you wanna see. If they pick option two, it's gonna be hard for me to fight them at any point. Hopefully they don't, but um, right now they're pretty well fortified with two two units on the iron tile there. 
So I'll just try to get some work done on my objectives in the meantime. So I pulled some really nice objectives this game. Both Shore Up the Shore and Divide and Conquer are extremely doable. They're all position based and I've got plenty of time to move around and get those finished. The question for me, the main question for me in these next few movement turns is going to revolve around whether I take my time to make it to the factory or if I keep getting encounters. If I pick up the right encounters, it'll lead to a faster finish. But if I don't, I'm going to really wish I had that factory card so that I can move every turn instead of moving every other turn. Okay, Crimea just got scouts, so I'm going to steer clear from them. Um, they're scared of me coming in their base, but I also have no interest in losing combat cards via scout. So the good news is they won't be moving outside of their base for another few turns, and that's key. If they can just stay there and I can get this game done before they're able to do much, that's a victory. Um, Okay, so right now you see me setting up for my last produce. I need two workers on the iron tunnel, which I did, and then I spread the rest out to the worker tunnel. Once I produce, build my last mech, build my eighth worker, I'll be able to spread out really nicely because they're already positioned on the tunnels. Um, I'm going to end my character's movement on another iron space so that I have quick access to the rest of the board. Okay, I don't need the pop, but two power is what I'm going for here. Yeah, so very risky style of play. Um, you have to improvise a lot. Right now, Polania had just moved out, so I have another target available to me. Um, they have similar power to me and similar cards, so I can, I can two-on-one them for a quick fight after I'm finished producing here. I think that something I'll be interested in doing is taking a turn to spread out and surround this lake or to get divide and conquer done so based on what albion and um, crimea do i might not be fighting anyone next round okay so that's another enlistment here's my produce this is two of my six stars done i have my mechs and my workers i'd like to get my other two objectives to get me to four and hopefully get some fights here pretty soon Albion's now within reach, so... Ooh, and they just produced. Okay. I know they have cards now, but it might be a uh, time to start a fight. Even if I lose, I need to get people spending power, spending cards, doing something, instead of just turtling up here. Let's see what mech they build. Okay, there's Riverwalk. So if Crimea goes out onto the oil, that's really bad for me. I'm gonna make it tempting for them to not by putting a worker on that tunnel so that should they try to move out, they have to move out really slow or risk being jumped on the tunnel. Um, Cause when a unit moves through a worker space, it ends their movement. So I'm gonna try to lock them up there and I'm gonna grab this encounter while completing Divide and Conquer. Ooh, enlisting a recruit is good. I could use the extra cards. I don't have a five right now, and I really, really want a five. You can't reliably win one-on-one -on -one, um, without that five card. So let's say I only need one more fight to win the game, for example, but I didn't have a five. That would put me in a really tough spot. I would have to use multiple combat units against one unit, and that's not always an option you're going to have. Looking through the, the board really quick, we have Polania all the way up at 8 popularity. And it looks like they're set up to continue building and um, potentially trading for mechs because they've been upgrading a good amount too. Everyone else though is in the 0 to 3 range of popularity. I think Albion and I have 2. Crimea looks like they have 1. So maybe they're not too concerned with bumping workers, but we'll see what they end up doing on their next move. I'm also very behind in coins, so I have a single coin. Um, Crimea has 14 coins. <laughs> so as long as they're stuck on two territories, I'm not worried. But when they begin spreading out and covering more ground, that's pretty dangerous for me. Um, I had to trade here. I didn't. I wasn't able to move, so I just traded for an upgrade, and I chose to decrease the cost of my enlistment because 
There's some food lying around, I might as well. I hope I don't have to enlist four times for this game to be over. I'd rather just fight a few combats, but it's not not so easy thus far to get those fights going. Everyone's pretty uh, conservative here. Nobody's really trying to come out and meet me in the middle. Crimid does not move, but they finish their mechs. They now have Wayfair. Wayfair is not very dangerous to me, and maybe it'll serve it as a, as a distraction to them. So I'm going to finish up surrounding this lake and claiming the factory with my worker. My character, unfortunately, is out of reach of the factory, so right now my only options are to do a two-on-two -two with Polania, which is not really a good idea, because if I lose, I bounce a lot of potential pressure off of Albion. So I'm going to force him to do something about me, and I'm going to do that by knocking his, uh, just occupying his starting tiles. I knock those workers home. I'm going to start a fight here. If I don't win, it's not a big deal, but... I have a feeling he's going to throw quite a bit, so I might as well max him out. If I max him out at 8 and he spends 8, that's a win for me. Um, my other option would be just throw a single card and hope he also does the same. Okay, so I would have lost if I only threw the 4. Oh, that's, there's one of the 5s, by the way. Um, so that's good. I get his food as well, so that's an enlistment for me. And I shore up the shore. Now that he's in his home base, I'm hoping he moves back onto one of my units from that second combat, but that's going to rely on him feeling like he can get a victory there. Hmm. So the clock is ticking. Wow, foundations on the home base. You don't see that too often. The clock is ticking. It looks like I have a dominant control of the board, which is definitely true, but I'm only one move away from both Polania and Crimea before it looks very different. So, if Polania builds a submerged mech, like they're gonna quickly be at the factory. That knocks me off three tiles. If uh, Crimea decides to move onto the tunnels and spread out, bump some of my workers home. This game looks very different. the The one good thing about them taking more center control is I'll have several more attack points that I can. Uh, look to to get a combat and I only need one more combat so I hope they decide to move right now we just have to see what happens here because we have a move open and we'd like we'd like those other players to change their position before it's our turn Albion is thinking so let's think too if you're Albion Okay, you just trade right in front of me. That is interesting choice. So it's a free two metal for me if I want to take it. I don't really want it. I just want them to move outside their base. Crimea enlists again. So they are just holding on to that move. Trying to build up stars and money and wait. Um, which is fair. I have five stars. If they move, they could be a target. I'm tempted to save my move here, but that's really not an option. I don't have anything worth doing besides moving. And if I had a factory card, I'd feel really good about continuing to uh, let the game go a little longer. But right now, I'm pretty nervous. Um, I'm going to get my character set up next to the factory, just in case this game goes long. And I'm going to cover all of Albion's starting tiles. That way, eventually he'll have to move and he will fight me. So that's going to look like me underpassing to that iron and then moving over to the farm. I have three enlists. Didn't plan on getting three, but here we are. Um, so no matter what, I know I'm going to be able to end the game in two turns. Like if I can't get any fights, I can at least move to get a fourth enlistment. Okay, do they move? thinking about it I know it's pretty hard to see but I have a lot of workers spread out like some of those darker color tiles it's hard to see my workers I have one on the factory I have one on the iron tunnel one on the wood tunnel so I, I do have a lot of control um, what I'm probably expecting here is for both Crimea and Polonia to move if they don't move now the game's over um, if they do move 
maybe they're also thinking the game's over, but it's better to claim more territories. Like, even if you have tier 3 popularity, let's say, 3 pop times 2 territories is a pretty small number still. You want to spread out, multiply your bonus, even if you're in tier 1, like, ending the game on 2 territories feels really bad. Um, you can think of every hex you occupy as two coins, even more than that if you have higher pop. So, Crime is thinking, I'm guessing they've got a move, but they haven't done it in a long time, so we'll see. Alright, they decide to Wayfair to an objective, or to an encounter, way up there, and then they turtle on their own farm. So they're really conscious about not giving me the opportunity to fight, which is fine. I just don't know if it's the winning strategy just this late in the game. Um, playing Saxony is sometimes like you're you're running a race, but your shoes are on fire. Like you have to get across that finish line fast, or else it's all over. Um, okay, this is dangerous. So Plania put two on the factory. They get a factory card. They also spread out. Wow, and they got an objective. So that was a big turn for them. Their score is now going to be much higher. Okay, Albion moves. This is good. So I'm just going to throw this fight, and um, I'll be able to hit him on my turn. Oh, he has, he has lots of fives. Um, okay. Good. So now I have a couple options on my turn. I can. I know Crimey can't move, so this is what the board's gonna look like. I can go two on two, or even like. Actually, I can't go three on two. I can go two on two on the factory with Plania, but I only have one five. So I'm gonna say no, because if I lose that fight, the game's over. I lose. Um, I'm gonna spread out, get as much territory as I can, and then fight Albion for that last star. Um, this is what. This is ideal because it lets me maximize my score without being vulnerable for counterattack. So right now, I need the one-on-one -on -one fight. There's like no other way to do it. So it feels bad, but I'm essentially picking on the weakest player repeatedly. And that's just like, it doesn't feel good for anyone, but it's, it's like the strategy you have to utilize to win the game as Saxony. Um, my character just needs to get off this tile so that I claim an extra space. I could knock Polanya's worker or Crimea's worker home, but I don't want to really play politics here. I'm just going to try to make my score as high as possible. So it'll be pretty close, like I only have four coins, but I do have six stars and a lot of the map. So I think, I think I'll lock up the win here. Wow, he has another five! So I know where all the fives were this whole game. Um, Okay, that's six stars. We'll see how it shakes out, but yeah, Saxony innovative. Very exciting combo to play, very fun. Um, and, f and exciting to like improvise as you go. Happy to have caught this on film, definitely one of my favorite mats. Okay, 44 so far. I don't have a lot of coins coming my way, so it's gonna be pretty close. Oh, wow. Okay, 49 to 41, 41, 20. Good game. Thanks for watching, and see you all next time.